Ungulu Bill here, and welcome back to From the Depths. In the last video, I looked at the Alpha Test 3.5.0 update as a very brief overview. This time, I'm going to be looking a little bit further at the stability change. However, it's still going to be a very qualitative look. I'm just spawning in a few vehicles that I think might be interesting, looking at the results, and that'll be about it. As I get more experience over time, uh, maybe I'll have some more insights, but for now, just a high-level overview. So, to turn on stability in the UI, if you are in the alpha test branch, go into the options menu, vehicle info, and then there's a stability toggle. And I've spawned in the candle on my team because I believe that the lightning hoods vehicles will be highly affected by this, and acceleration seems to be something that hits the stability particularly hard. Any vehicle with a high power to weight ratio will drop down to very low stability right when it kicks off. The candle in particular going to 0%, but things like the Arrow Tyrant I see hit around 20% as well. So anyway, I will spawn in a vehicle for it to shoot at and let it move out to its combat distance. So it's still able to see these shells. In theory, the distance that I can see them from is reduced, I will stop it from holding its weaponry. And now we can see the effects of the inaccuracy, because instead of just lasering down any single point, it's kind of spraying lasers all over the place. And that's still at relatively high stability. I think hit scan weapons like lasers are really going to feel the biggest impact from, from the stability loss, because their balance was highly dependent and their use on really being able to hit things exactly with things like cram and APS. Uh, the accuracy was already somewhat suspect to begin with. And this is at a stability that doesn't look too bad. And really the beam coherence isn't terrible either, right? These different turrets are generally targeting different areas of the ship, but each particular one, it's, it's not awful. It's going to take longer than it would normally to kill something like a hake or that sort of thing, but it still will kill it. What this will definitely stop a fast craft from being able to do, although it won't stop any craft from being able to do it, is just burning a hole through one very particular area of the ship all the way through. So maybe the Lightning Hoods craft will need a little bit of a rework, maybe they won't. I'm not exactly sure, and I'm not sure how much the stability aspect is really potentially going to change. Anyway, I have two more fairly brief experiments that I want to move on to, so I'm going to pause it and load up some other vehicles. All right, I have now spawned in the Sekhmet, which is a craft I built quite a while ago that I'd use for the late game of Neater because it's highly flexible and can engage many of the late game targets. It's also mostly immune to crams due to the way that it bounces. And even at a relatively long range, um, just conventional gunpowder APS will not hit it. You really need rail assist to hit it. However, since we're not moving that fast, we do actually bounce fairly significantly. I'm dropping down onto the same, roughly the same level as the ship to give an idea of that. The bouncing's reasonably significant. We do rely on gravity to push down, and we push up faster than we push down, I believe. But it's, the stability isn't too bad. I'm seeing it push all the way down to 65 now, which will be, will be very noticeable as we're thrusting back and bobbing. But for the most part, it's between about 75 and 85. I'm not expecting to be that bad. I'm going to go look at the Megalodon to see how our remote missiles are coming in. I need to change the SeaWiz because I didn't realize when I built it that uh, fragmentation on SeaWiz does not actually hit missiles. So uh, these fragment shells do not really work at all at SeaWiz. Now we'll just wait for the next missile volley to come in and see what it looks like from the Megalodon's perspective. 
the the main gun on the segment doesn't shoot AP EMP. I'll be interested to see how it does against the fifth season later. It just shoots hollow point rounds with super cavitation base. Um, I'm definitely considering swapping it over to AP EMP after seeing how good they are. Alright, so yeah, these remote guided missiles are still are still coming in decently. These are the ones I was more interested in because they can't turn as much as they get close to a target. But yeah, they, they hit as well. The, we'd probably have to get pretty low as far as stability is concerned before we have issues fighting capital ships with remote guided missiles. Um, I expect them to have some, some issues targeting smaller ships because if we do this, we're going to notice a bit of wiggle on them. Uh, maybe more than a little bit of wiggle. So, well, they can still hit a capital ship. It's, it's not amazing. So, now there's one more case that I really want to look at, because... I, I don't expect it to be that bad, because um, the segment isn't... isn't really that bad, but... It's something that can affect conventional ships, which is th this is supposed to buff. So, I'm just going to take take a look and see what it's like for a conventional ship in inclement weather. Alright, I've spawned in the Elephant, one of my cram vehicles, and I have made the weather as bad as it possibly could be. I expect with a floatier vehicle, this one, it floats high enough, but um, could have more displacement. This could be even worse. But we'll see what kind of effects this has this has for stability. It's trying to attack a straight line, and this, this is a reasonably fast one at about 45 meters per second when it kind of breaches the water like that. So when this drops down to that 72% stability, I'm kind of expecting that to start having some effects. Given how inaccurate Cram is to begin with, uh, this roughly 25% accuracy penalty that we're looking at Actually, it's more like 33%. The inaccuracy includes the inaccuracy from instability. It's about a 33% accuracy penalty at worst. Pretty much in line with, what, a base bleeder? I didn't expect that to be terrible, and this is kind of... Uh, ha waves, waves are being set to ludicrous mode right now. But... It's definitely something that could come into play a little bit. Especially... Especially in Onyx Wash territory, if they, you know, had ships that could decently target interceptors, they may struggle a little bit more than normal. So these are just sort of the cursory tests that I thought up to just give myself a very, a very high level understanding of kind of the effects that this new stability mechanic is going to take, and I'm sure as I use more ships and test out a few other battles. I'll find some additional cases, but I wanted to keep this fairly brief for now and really just take a very high-level approach to it. Once I have more experience with it and maybe it's been tweaked a little bit more, I'll see if I can come up with something a little bit more informative. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the future.